Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to Chapter 8, where we're going to consider the third example, the pitchfork bifurcation. So the supercritical pitchfork bifurcation, and I'll explain what that word supercritical means shortly, we consider this model equation, x dot is mu x minus x cubed. So we see that x equals 0 is always in equilibrium in this case, and y dot equals minus y. This equation has at most three equilibria. For mu greater than 0, it has three. For mu less than 0, it has one and they all three coalesce at mu equals zero. So we can look at the linearized stability by considering the Jacobian. And we see that the origin is stable, asymptotically stable for mu negative, and unstable, or a saddle point, for mu positive. And for mu negative, this is a saddle point, and for, sorry, for mu negative, it doesn't exist. For mu positive, it's stable. Okay, so we plot in the mu x plane the bifurcation diagram. So we see exactly what I just said, that for mu less than zero, the origin is asymptotically stable. It becomes unstable for mu greater than zero. We can see that at mu equals zero, all these three equilibria coincide. And it's the eigenvalue zero, so it's a non-hyperbolic equilibrium. But as mu passes through zero, we get two stable equilibria. The word supercritical is often used to denote this type of situation. It's also often referred to as a soft loss of stability because as you move, mu goes from left to right, the stable equilibria just smoothly increase or vary from mu greater than zero and you still have two stable equilibria. That is, you don't have trajectories that are able to run off to infinity. And you can plot these in the xy plane for representative values of mu less than zero, equal to zero, and greater than zero in this way, which is a useful exercise. Okay, now we're going to consider the subcritical Hopf bifurcation. The difference is we have a minus sign here in the x component. Still, for equilibria, we have x equals 0 is always in equilibrium. y has to be 0 in this case. Similarly, we have at most three equilibria. The origin is always in equilibrium. Three equilibria for mu negative, one for mu positive, we can do the linearized stability in the usual way. And for mu negative, we see that the origin is stable. It's unstable for mu positive. For mu less than zero, these two equilibria are unstable. So if we plot the bifurcation diagram in the mu x plane, what we see here is the origin is stable for mu negative, and it has, it's surrounded by two unstable equilibria. All right, as mu increases to zero, the unstable equilibria co collide with the stable equilibria in a non-hyperbolic point. As we move past mu equals zero, as in mu increases from mu equals zero, this is what we refer to as a hard loss of stability, the subcritical pitchfork bifurcation, 
The origin is still an equilibrium point. It's unstable, and trajectories that aren't on that equilibrium point run off to infinity. Okay, and that's the pitchfork bifurcation. The two variants, the sub and supercritical, hard and soft loss of stability. All right, that completes our examples in chapter eight. And I want to finish up with a final lecture next time where we summarize what we've learned and um, clean up a few little details. So see you next time. Bye.